Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today we're going to do something Indian, well Hyderabadi actually, chicken biryani. And I'm doing this for George Kerrison who asked me to do anything Indian, which is great because I love Indian food and I have been neglecting it of late, so let's put that right. Biryani is something very special. It's not something you can knock up in 10 minutes. Uh, it takes quite a lot of ingredients, quite a lot of time, but the results really justify it because it's fabulous. So let's do it. Now biryani has about a million ingredients and if I Put them all on the on the workbench now well first of all it probably wouldn't fit and secondly you would run a mile you'd be terrified anyway so we'll break it down into its component processes the first one is a marinade and then there's a load of stuff to prep the rice with and then finally there's a load of stuff to prep the actual biryani with so for the marinade you need your chicken you need a pot of natural yogurt you need two tablespoons of garlic and ginger paste, two teaspoons of garam masala, half a teaspoon of mace, and a teaspoon each of ground cumin, red chili, salt, and crushed up cardamom, or ground cardamom, if you can find it, it would be better. And don't forget, <laughs> the juice of half a lemon. So just throw all the spices into a bowl. And garlic and ginger paste. And the lemon juice and the yogurt. Give those a good old stir and then pop the chicken pieces in and get them all coated. So I'm using uh, chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks for this. Bone in, skin on. Most recipes agree that's the uh, the thing to do, you don't want boneless, skinless stuff going in there because it has, well, it hasn't got as much flavour. Now I'm going to cover that with plastic film and stick it in the fridge for at least two hours to marinate and I'll maybe give it a stir about after about an hour. Now there's quite a lot of things you need to prep while you're waiting for the chicken to marinate. So uh, one of the things is to make some chapati dough and you'll need this because we're cooking this using the dumb process which is which means steaming basically and to make that work you need to be able to seal the lid of the vessel to the vessel using some dough i searched high and low to find a recipe that said a bit more than use dough like what kind of dough and how do you make it anyway it turns out to be a basic chapati dough so i've got 200 grams of plain all-purpose flour 100 mils of warm water two tablespoons of vegetable oil and a teaspoon of salt. So I'll just mix these together. I'll just stir in, not all of the water, just most of it and see how, how it turns out and add a bit more if you need it. I think we need it. So there we go. Uh, I'll just cover this with a bit of plastic film until it's needed. Now you're gonna need quite a lot of ghee for this and if you don't have any, it's quite easy to make your own. You need a block of unsalted butter and just pop it in a pan on low heat and melt it. This, this is exactly the same as clarified butter by the way. Okay, butter's all melted and you can see there's this white scum has risen to the top. So we need to get rid of that, skim it off, skim off the scum. Now we need to filter the ghee a bit more, so I've got a sieve lined with muslin cloth and I'm just going to pour the, the liquid through that because you, you get a load of sediment on the bottom of the pan as well and we don't want that. You can see in the bowl we've got a golden clear liquid that's your ghee, your clarified butter. Now the next stage is to part cook the rice so I've got 300 grams of basmati rice and some spices to go with it. Two bay leaves, uh, about an inch two and a half centimeters of cinnamon, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, six cloves and six black peppercorns. I don't know who worked out exactly why you needed six. And um, what you can do is chuck those in directly with the rice, but then you need to fish them out later because whole spices, not nice. Alternatively, you can wrap them in a bit of muslin cloth or you can put them in one of these things like it's called a tea ball. Um, and that just keeps them separate from the rice while it cooks. Now the rice itself, I've just rinsed this in five or six changes of water till the water runs clear. Lots of recipes tell you to soak it for half an hour as well. 
I tried that a couple of days ago and I got mush, uh, which was a disaster really. You don't want mushy rice in your biryani. So I think maybe you need to soak it if it's older rice. I'll cook the rice. I've got a couple of litres of water coming to the boil and a half teaspoon of salt in there. Now the water's boiling, so I'm going to pop the rice in. Oops, that wasn't very clever, was it? <laughs> and the spices, and we'll let that cook for five minutes. And the rice should be a bit over half cooked and somewhat al dente. So I've drained off the rice and I've popped it into a bowl of cold water to stop it cooking any further. Now the final clump of ingredients, this is for cooking the rice with. We've got three or four red onions, a handful of mint, a handful of coriander, cilantro, the ghee, probably about 10 tablespoons of that, and a pinch of saffron soaking in a tablespoon of milk. So first of all, we need to cook the onions. So uh, top and tail them, and peel them, and slice them thinly into half moons. Now we need to pre-cook the onions in the pan that you're going to cook the biryani in. So I've got uh, a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil and a couple of tablespoons of ghee on low heat. And we'll add the onions and stir them well, get them all coated. And you want these to cook until they're brown and caramelized, which will take about 15 minutes with occasional stirring to make sure they don't stick and burn. Cooking away, we'll finally chop the coriander. I've already done the mint there. So the onions are well cooked. I'm just going to drain them from the oil and the ghee. Keep the oil and ghee for later. Right, now we're ready to assemble our biryani. So I've got all my bits ready. I'm just going to put a bit more ghee in the pan and then I'll add the lumps of chicken. And you want to try and get them in a single layer on the bottom if you can. Now you want a layer of rice, about one third of it, and then about a third of the onion. Spread it as evenly as you can. And a third of the coriander, and a third of the mint. And then a couple of tablespoons of ghee. Or even four. And then another layer of rice, again about a third of it, another third of the onion, another third of the coriander, and another third of the mint. My measuring of thirds wasn't very accurate, was it? And the rest of the coriander and mint. And now just pour the saffron and the milk over half of the, the rice on that top layer. So some of the rice will get coloured and most of it won't. And that will look very nice. The last time I made this a few days ago, I also put a few drops of red food colouring in, which proved to be a mistake because it did actually look like roadkill. <laughs> so I'm not doing that this time. The last of the onions and some more of the ghee. And now the last thing to do is stick the lid on. This method of cooking in India is called dum, D-U-M, which as far as I can make out, it just means cooking in steam or steaming. So essentially what we're doing is gluing the lid on so that no steam can escape during cooking. And this is very sticky dough, this should do the job. Okay, so that's dough all the way around. Now just pop the lid on gently. Don't press it down too much because you don't want to break the dough and then wrap the dough up over the top of the lid. So I hope this works. I haven't used, well, I used this pan the other day for the disaster original version where all the dough fell off. And I think it's because this has a very narrow rim and the lid is glass and you know, whatever. Uh, so fingers crossed. Most, <coughs> now most Indian recipes that I've seen for this tell you to put a tower above the flame. Now a tower is, is it's a flat disc of cast iron or iron with a, with a handle. So it's like a, a pan without an edge. Um, 
and its purpose is to diffuse the heat across the bottom of the pan. Now, I don't have one of those, so I'm using this big frying pan as my tower, and I've got my biryani pan inside that. So you cook that on medium heat for about 15 minutes, and then we turn it down to low and cook it for another 45 minutes. Here it is, our dumb biryani. And now the trick is to get it open. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I guess that was a pretty good seal. We have quite a lot of dough sliding around the inside, but that smells fantastic. Okay, here it is. A wonderful biryani. Mmm. Nice rice. Delicious chicken. That was wonderful. Mmm. Biryani. Lots of hard work, but worth the effort. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you can get the full recipe on my website, keefcooks.com, and there should be a link kicking around on the screen over there or down there. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. Link, link and uh, talk to me, leave comments, make requests, keep it civil and friendly or I will ban you and thanks for watching and see you next time.